Hello and welcome to another API Builder training video. In this video, we'll be going over how to use API Builder's model first development. We'll cover the creation of models, the generation of endpoints from those models, and how to inspect the model's flow driven APIs. To get started, all we have to do is run our API Builder project and visit the console. If you don't have a project created, then you can watch the first training video, which explains that whole process. As a refresher, to start your project, all you have to do is type apt-c run, and your project will go ahead and get started up. Once your project has finished starting, you can go ahead and visit the console URL provided. Now that our console is up, we can go to the model section and click the new model button. You'll be presented with a dialog that allows you to choose a new model's name which connector to use, and a description for your model. For this example, we'll be creating a contact model backed by ArrowDB. ArrowDB is a NoSQL database with lots of common predefined data models that is easily accessible via RESTful API. A connector is a module that allows API Builder to easily interface with data sources and services. If we had more data connectors installed, such as MongoDB or MySQL, we could also use them. For simplicity, we'll use the default ArrowDB. Now that we've started creating our new model, all we have to do is add some fields. To do that, click the New Fields button. For our example, we'll be adding five new fields. Contact ID, first name, last name, salutation, and email. We'll make all of these fields required except for the salutation. For the sake of convenience, I'll demo creating the first few fields and then fast forward through the rest. The first field we'll create is the contact ID. We'll name that just CID. And we want to make sure it is a required field. We can add a small description or default value if we want to, but uh, for this we'll leave the default value blank and we'll just say the contact ID. All I have to do now is hit the add field to model. And then you can go ahead and hit add field button again, and we'll add the first name field. Again, we want to make this a required field, and we'll add a description saying the contact's first name. And then we add that to the model. At this point, I'll fast forward through the creation of the remaining fields. And there you have it. This is the definition for our model with our five fields, four of which have required values, and the salutation is not required. If you want to delete or modify a field, you can do so over here on the right-hand side. With our model defined, we can proceed to the next step. Here we can enable and disable the legacy arrow APIs for the model. We'll disable them since we'll be generating flow-based APIs later. Lastly, click Save. The server will now restart. Once the server has restarted, you can see that the contact model is now added to the models list. If you click on that model, you can view and edit any of the fields there. In previous versions of Arrow, model-first development was done using Arrow APIs. The limitation with this approach was inflexibility. The APIs exposed were not very configurable or extensible. With the new flow-based orchestration, it's now possible to generate model-first endpoints that are backed by these flows. The interface for the generated endpoints closely mirrors the previous API-based interface. This interface includes the standard CRUD operations, as well as convenience operations such as find by ID, delete all, and find all. Now that we have our model, we'll generate our flow-based endpoints via the cog on the right-hand side. This will generate flow and swagger files on your local file system. The flow files determine how an endpoint is executed, and a swagger file determines how to execute that endpoint. Once the server restarts, go to the API details page for your newly generated API. Here on the API details page, you can see all of the API endpoints that were generated. As you can see from the status column, these endpoints are currently enabled. We'll use them in a minute. 
I first want to show you the generated files that were created on the file system and an example of one of the flows. Here is a reduced picture of the current file system. You can see in the endpoints directory we have a contact file which is a swagger definition for what we see in the endpoint details page. You can also see a list of flow files. Each flow file defines how a particular endpoint is ran. If we want to see a graphical representation of the flow, we can click the flow button in the endpoint details page. For this example, we'll just take a look at the find by ID flow. This page is the flow editor and we'll go over it in more detail later. I want to show you a quick overview of the flow graph. The flow can be read from the top down. If you look at the contact node, you can see there is a fork where we can send back a result with a 200 if there was a result found, or we can send back a 44 if no results were found. Now that we have a basic understanding of flows, let's use the flow based endpoints to create some test data. Let's go back to the endpoint details page and expand the create method. Now that we've expanded the method, we can see some important details about that endpoint. A description for that endpoint, an example of that endpoint request, as well as any body parameters required to execute that endpoint. If you scroll down, you can also see there is a handy test API section here where we can actually invoke our API and create test data. Here you can see some pre-filled out body parameters, and then on the right hand side you can see a JSON schema representation of the body parameters. For example, you can see that there is an email which is expected to be of type string. We'll now use the test API to create four entries. Each of these contacts are superheroes. First, we'll start with Batman. You can see that after clicking create, we got back a 201 showing the unique ID for that contact. I'll also be creating contacts for Spider-Man, Wonder Woman, and Superman. I'll fast forward through the data entry and pause briefly before creating each entry so you can follow along. To confirm that all of our contacts were successfully created, we'll use the find all contact method. As you can see, the find all contact method doesn't take any parameters, so we'll just execute it. If you scroll down, you'll see that we have all four of our superheroes. That is all for our second episode starring Model First APIs. To recap, we covered how to create models, how to generate flow-based APIs from those models, what is a flow and where does it live, and lastly, how to use the endpoints page to create test data. I hope you enjoyed this episode and hope to see you at the next one. Thank you.